Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Good evening, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Jerry Blair Brown Show, right here on Blog Talk Radio, and I'm your host. And biggest hand, Jay Blair Brown. I'm sitting here with one of my colleagues who just had the most annoying alarm go off, so that's why I'm I'm falling out because, uh, yeah, it was real weird. Anyway, you guys know why we're here. I know why we're here. So let me say it again. Tonight's three guests are some of the most insightful in the industry. You guys are going to love this show. We have. Chaz Palmentary, who we are waiting to dial in. Chaz will be here in just a moment. Then we have Tony Spiridakis and Dominic Antignano. Sorry, Dominic. (laughs) We're going to get to those guys in just a minute. First, I want to give you uh, just a little heads up. Our dial-in number is 347-539-5805. I'll say it again, 347 539-5805. Five three nine five eight zero five. Now, when you dial in, if you'd like to speak with our guest, please press the number one, and that kind of raises your hand and lets me know that you have a question or comment for any or all of our guests. Uh, please don't forget to like my Facebook page. My Facebook page is Living a Dream Radio Show with J. Blair Brown. That's Living a Dream Radio Show with J. Blair Brown. And finally, next Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern, mark your calendars for this one, 3 p.m. Eastern, I have Mr. Michael T. Williamson coming on to the show. That's next Monday, October 1st at 3 p.m. Eastern. So uh, mark your calendars. That's going to be another live show. But for now, I'm going to get these guys on the line. So we have Tony and we have Dominic. How are you guys? Very well. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. I'm sorry, sorry, Dominic, about that. I, I tried. I tried to fix Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I told you guys, you have the floor on this one. I I want to tell our audience, this interview just fell in my lap. A colleague uh, said to me that she was working uh, alongside you guys and, and, and just said, hey, would you like to have these guys on the show? I'm like, duh. Yeah, I was like, why could not? Well, of course I want them on my show. So at any rate, uh, we're going to get started. And I think we're going to start with you, Tony. Tell us who you are and uh, yeah. tell us what to well, this, to this first show. of all, I'm an old friend of Michael T. Williamson's, and I'm so excited you're going to have him on the show. He's an amazing actor. Yes, thank Love you. Love him. Yeah. Yeah, we did a TV series many, many years ago called Bay City Blues. It was like one of the only really bad Stephen Bochco shows that he ever made. And uh, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Well, there you go. And uh, it was, um, but Michael is just a gem. He's just, it's so wonderful to see the great work he's doing from all the movies to the, you know, TV roles. Everything he does is just so filled with integrity. But anyway, enough about Michael T. Williamson. Um, right. <laughs> I was, I, um, I basically, you know, wanted uh people to sort of experience what was being done at Sundance, which is such a beautiful place where actors get to work together side by side with directors and writers. And one of the Uh other things that Sundance does so really well is they mix ages. So they'll have like a 13 year old screenwriter work with a 40 year old director and actors of all ages. And it's very hard for people who are actors, writers and directors to go get trained, whether it be, I mean, not to compare us to an NYU film school, which is a very particular kind of conservatory, and you need to do that, but to have the private training that's offered at various private school outside of the academia, you know, to create a sort of place like Sundance was sort of the dream that um, everyone involved in, in Manhattan Film Institute had. And so we kind of went on that model and basically tried to get cross-generational actors, meaning actors, we've got, uh, like, one of our films that we made this summer, you know, had a cast with one actress was 13 years old and one was uh, 45, you know. Wow. Uh, and, and, and also cross-racial, cross-gender, you know, just to try to give filmmakers 
You know, a lot of times they go to these private film schools in the su in summer, is particularly, and you know, you're given a camera, you work with a teacher, and then your cousin has to act in it because there's no one else around in the summer to cast. So what we tried to do was we we tried to offer uh, you know a film school that was a two week boot camp where you came as a writer director or you came as a director and worked with a writer, and we provided really wonderful actors who were chosen and had to audition or interview to get to come to our institute. And that gave the directors such a leg up because they had incredible actors to work with. And um, th that was kind of what we saw happening at Sundance. And how are we going to recreate that? We're certainly not as good as Sundance, and we don't have the exposure. And, we have to charge, and Sundance doesn't, and there's a million things that make it difficult. But we tried to recreate it, and we think we did a really uh, good job because we had an amazing summer, and we made 20 films in two weeks. And uh, wow. it was beautiful. Yeah, it was a great experience. Huh. And, and um, the reason Dominic Antignano is on the call is because he is the artist in residence <laughs> at Piconic Landing, which is a place – uh, that is a, a, a beautiful uh, retirement community that has art, a cultural arts center, and we were able to use for our classrooms uh, the facilities of Peconic Landing, which which made it like just feel like you were going to kind of Harvard. <laughs> it was a big stone mansion, and it made you feel like proud to go to make uh, indie films. It was amazing. Uh -huh. And can you can you address uh, your experience with this, Dominic? It was just just like Tony said. Uh, Peconic Landing is a, a continuing care retirement community or a life care community in Greenport, uh -huh. New York. Greenport is this beautiful town village uh, about less than two hours east of New York City, uh, in eastern Long Island. It, it's nestled on Long Island Sound on the water. Uh, it's a 145-acre campus uh, with um, a, 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 a big community that is home to uh, many people who have really, uh, to me, are the distillation of the entire world into about 312 people. It's a, it's a very active community. It's not a retirement community by any means. I don't think anybody comes here to retire. It's just that it's the next phase in, in what we do. But part and parcel of, of our community is the Cultural Arts Center, uh, which includes uh, an outdoor sculpture park, one of the only outdoor sculpture parks on the East End, uh, with many famous international artists, and um, an auditorium that houses, it's about a 180-seat auditorium where we simulcast the Metropolitan Opera, the 92nd Hello? Hey, okay, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Dominic, hold on just a second. Sure. Yes, uh, Charles, is that you? Uh, yes, that is me. <laughs> okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that we got you in and we were just listening to Dominic. So finish your thought, Dominic, and you're next, Chaz. <laughs> okay. Thanks for calling. It's, it's, an, it's an interesting segue. It, it's a, the cultural center uh, that we've established at Peconic Landing just came about by us offering programs for our residents of Peconic Landing, people who live here, but opening it up to the public, programs that you couldn't find anywhere on the East End. We've teamed up with uh, and had partnerships with libraries and a great group like the East End Arts Council in Riverhead and other forward-thinking groups around the North and South Fork. And when Tony and Chaz came along with the Manhattan Film Institute, it was a, an absolutely a great fit because they, through the month of July, was energized. Uh, the, there was just electricity in the air with uh, people from all over the world taking writing classes, acting classes, editing classes, making the films, um, acting coach uh, classes, and um, and the like, which really changed the face of the North Fork. It, it became, Peconic Landing and MFI, uh, became a welcome destination, I think, for the art scene. And it just opened up another door, which uh, became 
um, the beginning of a great relationship last year. And it's it'll happen again this coming up year, but I'll let Tony and Chad talk more about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So, hello, Mr. Chad. How are you? Okay, pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm 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 doing much better. Um, I didn't know if I was, you know, I, I felt like I was on a, a blind date and somebody wasn't going to show up. So no, I was, <laughs> I, I was calling in and they kept putting me on cue. And I said, no, I don't want to be on cue. I want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and we want you to talk. <laughs> Every, everybody knows who you are. But one of the things that, that, that I was really impressed with, because I did get a chance to check out the uh, Manhattan Film Festival's uh, website, and, and I see that you were, you were doing some, some real-time work in this project there. Tell us about that. Tell us about your experience and, and what what can this project from your perspective do for our listeners who are independent filmmakers and actors? Well, uh, the great thing about it is, you know, a lot of these uh, places where, I mean, you could open up the show business in a lot of those papers and there's all these different places that, uh, you know, offer instructions. For, and I guess I'm sure some of them are, are very well and some of them are good. Uh, but some of them, you know, are probably not. The great thing about our place is it's real professionals doing it. There's myself, there was Tony Golan, Bob Krakauer, people in the business, people that are doing it, you know, people that are doing it. So I, I think that's the first thing, you know, that's important. Mm -hmm. And and you and it really, and, and, and Tony and Bob and Wendy and all, and, and Tony Spiridakis, we, we love being there. I mean, we're, we're not there to get rich. We're there to really teach these young incredibly talented people here. And some of them are really not so young. There are some people there that are obviously in their 30s and 40s that always wanted to write and never, finally they said, you know what, uh, it's time to get off my backside and really do something. And they come to a class like this, and what it does is it energizes them because <clears throat> we're right there, and we, you know, we kind of hold their hand. And uh, also we, we talk to them. It's not just about the work. It's about, uh, you know, really just how to deal with show business and how to take no and how to listen to the word no and, and what could you do when you hear the word no. You know, there are many talented people, Jay, who never, ever make it, never. And the reason why is because they just can't handle the business. It's just too much for them. So uh, making it is not just talent as far as uh, work goes. It's as far as you you have to you have to have persevere, and you have to have certain tools that help you persevere, and we help you we, we you know we teach you those tools. I I think that's wonderful. That a colleague and I were were discussing that same thing. How um, uh, you know people look at it on TV. Of course, it looks easy. That's why you guys are the experts. But people think, oh well, I'm just going to go audition. I'm going to knock their socks off. And when they reject it, they just they just can't take it. Their their self esteem is shot. They also right. don't know how to ask the appropriate appropriate questions to get the appropriate answers to get the gig. So that, that's exactly. that's really it, important. It, I'm glad you brought that up. Exactly. And the course that I'm teaching, uh, in fact, I'm going to be teaching a writing course, but I'm also teaching a uh, audition course because there are many wonderful actors, but they they don't know how to audition. They're terrible auditioners. They always say the same thing, oh, if I could just get the part, I could show you what a good actor I am. Well, that's not the way it goes. You know, you have to audition. You have to, you know, they want to see you in that room, and, and that's it, because if they, if, they don't have, if they never saw your work on screen, uh, you know, I'm sorry, you're going to have to audition. So a lot of actors just can't audition. They just don't know how. And there, there is a technique uh, that, you know, that in my class that I teach them, I, I, I give them, I make it simple, simpler for them. I just focus on a few of these tools to make you, like, just be the best auditioner you can. So, um, in fact, I'm, I'm teaching that, with, I'm doing a class in Manhattan, in fact. When is that, Tony, in November? November 10th and 11th. Yeah, November 10th and 11th at, uh, and where exactly it's is gonna that? Be, it's going to be at One-on-One -on -one Studios in Manhattan. In and Manhattan. It's Manhattan Film Institute, uh, and we're doing it at, at One on One, which is a wonderful studio uh, where Bob Krakauer has a master class. Right, November 10th and 11th. And again, yeah. we'll be also back out uh, at MFI no, in, in Southport, which I'm very excited about. And the, and the accommodations and how great they are to us in Southport, and 
it's like Dominic said, there was an energy there. There was an excitement there. There was all these young kids. I, I never even been to Southport. I always go to East Hampton when I go out there, you know. So this was a whole new awakening for me. And I told people, I said, wow, what an undiscovered great destination, you know. And so a lot of people really enjoy themselves there. So I just think it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. Okay, now I'm looking at the website right now, and it says that you're you're teaching a one-man show on October right. 6th and 7th. So that's something different? That, that's, that's some, that yes, got that's, bummed because Chaz is going to be uh, doing serious, right, Chaz? You're going to be doing yes. something in October and the one-man yes, show. Yes, I'm going to be doing – I have a talk show that I'm going to be doing on Sirius Radio on every Wednesday in October. So that had to get, you know, so that switched. So I'm going to be doing that every Wednesday in October. And, um, re- and again, it, the name of the show is called Ask Chaz. And people who want to ask questions about the business, who want advice about the business, can call in. And it's uh, Channel 104 right after Jay Thomas on Wednesday, uh, starting October 3rd. Okay. As long as it's not on Monday. I, 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 can't, I can't have you as my competition. How, how, would, I, how would I tolerate that? How would I stand up against Chaz? <laughs> oh, it's only, it's only an hour, one hour. Come on. It's from, it's from six Yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't compete with you, Chaz. We all yeah, know no, that. So thank you for coming in on Wednesdays. And, and that starts in October? October 3rd, oh. yes. October and, 3rd. Um, okay, so next Wednesday. Okay. Jay, so everybody, I, wanted to, I, I wanted to clear up about what we did this past summer and what we're going to do again with Manhattan Film Institute, just in case the students who are going to call in, um, the website still has Chaz listed as doing the one-man show, and that's going to change this week, and it's going to be the audition workshop, which is going to be happening November 10th and 11th, but that hasn't been changed on the website because of uh, okay. Chaz's new gig. So that was the confusion that, that was there. Um, the other thing is... It's in Greenport, New York, uh, on the North Fork, and oh, at, at the yeah at Peconic Landing. And what we do, Jay, and what we did this summer with Chaz and Tony Goldwyn and Joe Pantoliano and uh, Bob Krakauer, Wendy McKenna. Uh, it was Larry Moss, who's one just an amazing acting teacher. We had a world class faculty, and that's what Chaz is trying to say. It's not a place where you're going to go. And, I, for instance, I teach at a, a beautiful college. I teach film at, at Chapman University, and some of my students teach at a lot of the film camps that go on during the year. But where Manhattan Film Institute wanted to separate itself from the competition was we wanted to literally say we had a world-class faculty, and if you went to study and came to study with us, you actually worked with Chaz. You actually worked with Tony Goldwyn. You know, it was we we really wanted to change the the situation because we all of us, Chaz, me, Tony Goldwyn, we were all in that situation where great actors reached down to us and shared their secrets with us and were on stage with us for a moment in a summer theater, and it changed our lives. And so we want to do that for filmmakers now and give them the opportunity to actually work with somebody like Tony or, for instance, Ben York Jones, who wrote Like uh, Crazy, which won the Sundance Film Festival. He was there on set helping directors. I mean, you know, that kind of one-on-one, boots on the ground, you know, you touch the person literally and emotionally and uh, Mm -hmm. career-wise, and it changes. It changes lives. And so... Mm -hmm. You know, what we did was we set up a two-week boot camp, which was a film camp, which the objective was take 20 directors and 20 actors and in two weeks make 20 films and 20 short films. Yeah, And, and, and it was we worked for two months prior to the camp. We worked on those short film scripts so that we weren't just coming and having a complete chaotic uh, free-for-all. We actually worked for two months on those short scripts. They were between three to five pages in length. And we basically gave those directors 20 actors to cast, which meant if we had 20 directors, we had to make 20 films. And that meant that each actor who came to MFI left with two finished short films. So wow. in, instead of wow. saying, oh, what are you going to learn? Well, you know what? You're going to make two films each. 
Right. So actually, that, they have the, the directors. The directors have a reel to show somebody if they would like to see it. The actors have a reel to show somebody if they would like to see Two it. Two reels. Two reels. <laughs> exactly. And the writers. So, uh, you know, we really, like Tony, really, and this was Tony's idea to do this. And I just think not only do you, you leave with something tangible in your hand to show people your work. And you were taught and directed by and helped by really top professionals. So it's a win-win for all these kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good. We have a caller on the line. Caller from 8 Zero four eight or your last four digits. Go ahead, caller. You are living a dream with Jay Blair Brown. Well, hello, Jay Blair Brown. How are you today? Fine, thank you. What's your question? I have a question for all three of the gentlemen. Actually, um, I just wanted to know, out of curiosity, what do you think was your most memorable um, part and why? And also, Mr. Palmineri, I've been a fan for many, many years. I just wanted to know what you thought it was like working with um, Robert De Niro in the Bronx Tale. I watch that movie every time it comes on. Love it. And you did oh, so well in it. Well, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, my, uh, if you're asking me my most memorable part, well, I mean, my three, I, I couldn't say one. My three most memorable would probably be, obviously, Bronx Tale, uh, usual suspects and bullets over Broadway, obviously. Mm -hmm. I would say both um, three. Uh, and working with Robert De Niro was a complete dream because obviously we we became great friends. We ended up doing four movies together. Uh, we're still best of friends. We live near each other, and he was just oh. so give. He was so giving and so wonderful, and uh, he was so into like the collaborative aspect of filmmaking. So, and he was just a real friend. Of, of an of an artist, so uh, I would have to say that would be it. Okay, that's what I would expect. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much, caller. Appreciate you calling in. Now, Chaz, I do have to tell you. I hope this does not embarrass anyone, but I have to tell you. Um, at least in my community, everybody said. You having Sonny on the show? <laughs> it, yeah. You can't run away from that. You just can't. That's oh, no. Great. It's, yeah, it's pretty uh, It's pretty crazy. It's crazy. It really <laughs> is. No, I know. You know, it's funny. I've made over, over 60 movies, and my first big movie was Bronx Tale, and they still talk about it. Well, also, don't forget, it was the one-man show that I did. You know, people think I did the one-man show, uh, after the movie, they don't realize that I did the one man show first. That's what Robert De Niro saw, and that's how the movie got made. You see? Wow, really? That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah. And I did it. I did it twenty something years ago. Then I did it on Broadway recently, and mm -hmm. now I just do it uh, like in. It, I do. I, I'll do one or two nighters in, in, in Vegas, uh, in uh, uh, Mount Airy Lodge, in. Uh, you know, Mohegan Sun and places like that. In fact, I'm doing a, I'm doing it at uh, this Saturday night. I'm doing the show at, at the Harbor Lights Theater in Staten Island, the wonderful theater there. Just so I still do the show, and uh, I I love doing it and I enjoy it very much. And it's uh, but it became it came before the movie, not after the movie. Uh huh. Uh huh. I have I have a Joan Jones, which is the coolest name. Joan Jones in our chat room, and she types in. I got five fingers, but I only use three. She said her yeah, favorite yeah. line ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good, Joe. Thanks for that. Uh, now, now, Tony. Yeah. I know that you have. I mean, you're you're an actor. Are you still acting, or, or are you just doing the writing now? No, I just act for my kids, and uh, I just um, I'm I'm just writing and um, you know, uh, teaching, writing and teaching. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm yeah. You know, I, I find that not peculiar, but that's kind of like a, a, a progression, some some kind of an evolution, if you will, of, of a lot of the actors that come onto the show. Eventually, they do the writing and the directing, and then I don't know what happens because I've never done it, so I don't know what it's like to leave acting and go on to something better. But it, but apparently, it it gives you such a, a sense of uh, fulfillment that most don't come back to acting. Why is that? 
Well, you know, in my case, I started in the theater um, and I trained at some really wonderful places and um, at Circle in the Square, and then I went to the I went to the Yale School of Drama for uh, graduate school, and so I had the pleasure of working with some of the best young actors, you know, uh, in America, and 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 then worked in the theater, and I, as a lot of uh, students from Yale, you know. Or want to do, we get jobs. And I got a job, and I remember getting a job right out of Yale, which was a TV series, which I did with Michael T. Williamson. And uh, oh, okay. and I remember thinking, oh, this is really weird. I don't like this. I want to be in front of a live audience. <laughs> you know, it was sort of a, you know, it was a, it was a learning curve to act on stage only, and then actually act in, you know, front of the camera. So there's different. You know, the, the the really great actors can do it all. They can, like, Chaz can do okay. stage, film, television. He's on Modern Family, improves. He's incredibly okay. funny. And, uh, but, but for me, I think it was, I loved uh, the writing, and I only liked a particular kind of acting. So it was very easy for me and a natural progression for me to go from uh, acting to writing. And, um, and, uh, and that really helped my writing, the fact that I was a very... Uh, sort of seriously trained actor actually helped me with character, with dialogue, with uh, building a story, creating a narrative arc, you know, knowing structure, all of that stuff was like all stuff that I learned as an actor. And, um, and one of the things I think happens to in our progression in our careers is most of us, Chaz, me, Tony, I can, everybody, Larry Moss, I could speak for all of us. We are in our place in our careers because of the teachers that we had and i think there's an amazing tradition amongst actors like meryl streep like sigourney weaver like you know kevin klein like a uh, robin williams you know these people you know those four that i named went to juilliard and yale respectively i mean these are really well-trained people Chaz is a member of the actor's studio. You know, that's a tradition. And, and Chaz believes, as we all believe, that you give back to the profession that you did well in. And there's a, there's a real serious, like, and if the young filmmakers and actors are out listening to this, take it to heart. There is a community, and if you work your ass off, you get, you get to be part of that community just by working hard. And it doesn't mean you have to make it. It just doesn't mean you have to make it right away. But there are plenty of teachers. Like I know Alfred Molina teaches. I mean, I could name so many great actors that are in the classroom changing lives every day. And it's up to those students to go find those people and work really hard. So, you know, I think there's a reason that uh, you'll meet a lot of artists like Chaz who are, who are teaching and, and, um, and, and giving back to the people that I mean, he was. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Tony's absolutely right. I mean, it's easy for me because between the, sometimes between a movie or between projects that I'm writing, you know, I get a weekend and do a weekend and, and teach for a weekend. And, 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 I, and I, t I get out of it as much as the kids get out of it. And I really, you know, my dad was the one who said to me, you know, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent, and that's from a Bronx tale. And to get one of these young kids who are really talented or get, a, or get even a gentleman who's 45 years old, who's never written, and it takes, it takes our class, and he wants to be a writer, and all of a sudden, I read his work, and I say, where the hell have you been? How come you haven't written? What's, and he goes, well, you know, I have a family, and all of a sudden, then, when he hears that encouragement, and say, hey, you know what, if you want to do this, you got to do it, because you have the talent. It, 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 I'm telling you, it changes the lives of these people, and uh, to me, that's worth everything. It really is. Mm -hmm. We have another caller. I really, really I'm, I'm excited to, to put this caller in. He's actually an award-winning uh, Best Actor of the the film Green Castle, and that's Karan Dunbar. Karan, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, can we you hear, hear you. Fine. Thanks for calling in. That's a pleasure. Great uh, show. I'm really enjoying it. How you doing? How you gentlemen doing? Hello, uh, I, have a, I have a question um, uh, for Chaz. Uh, a fan of you and your work. I um, always like to see what people that I, uh, I'm looking at in industry, what their quotes are. And there's a quote that you said that I'm very interested in hearing uh, your take on. I don't know if you've probably done a lot of them, but um, this one you probably don't remember as well. But this one basically said about you loving 
first time and second time filmmakers because they take a chance. Um, that's correct. Kind of like, I, I lo- yes, that's correct. I love working with first time directors, and people are afraid of that, and uh, I'm not. I just think it's. Uh, I know the quote. The quote is, "I love working with them because." They uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you know, it's that thing they'll try anything because they don't know better, and I, I like that. And sometimes there's magic that happens, and it's usually the first project they've been working on for ten years to try to get yeah. it made, you know. And the only thing that I ask for them, you know, because uh, they say, "Gee, Chaz, why are you doing this movie?" You know, I, I, I can't. I, I, I say, "Well, of course you wrote a great script," and I say, "But I do want something in return," and then they say, "What?" And I said, the only thing I want to return is that one day, uh, when someone comes to you and you have a chance to help them, that you do that. And uh, yeah. they say, I, I promise you that. And uh, I like that. Uh-huh. That's beautiful. So, Clem, can you tell us about your film just a little bit? Um, yeah, it's it's funny uh, what he just said. It's 10 years in the making, and that's what the film was. I always knew I wanted to do a film, and I just it, it was, he said it best. It's taking chances. That's why I really uh, stuck to that quote. It was just taking a chance, which is the catchphrase of the film. If you never take chances, you never have opportunities. And I, I think now with the technology that's out there and available, and, and everything you're saying, I'm, ta- I'm sitting here with like two pages of notes of what you guys are talking about in regards to the whole writing process. And um, it took about three years because I'm not a writer, and it took me three and a half years to actually learn the basics behind screenwriting and so forth. But um, like I said, it, um, it was just taking chances, and um, I'm just shocked the way the, uh, the the film festivals have been receiving uh, my films. Just to be honest with you, I didn't expect this stuff to happen. I'm just happy that someone likes the film. Well, why not? Yeah. Why 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 can't it happen? Why what you know? If you wrote a good film, it should happen. Don't you know? You should feel hey, you know what? That just you know you're a talented guy, obviously, and people are responding to it because let me tell you something. People, if they don't like your movie, there is nothing, uh, the only thing that you really tell them, someone likes your movie or someone likes reading your script or someone, you know, is when the, uh, I don't know if I could, can I say the word uh, ass on, on this right now? Can I, can I say that? Or, yeah, go ahead. Or, if the asses in the seats tell you, if they laugh, they like it. If they don't laugh and it's a comedy, they don't like it. If if they all get up and leave, they don't like it. But when you put a hundred strangers or five hundred strangers in a dark theater, believe me, they tell you if they like it or not. You know, so and if people are responding, obviously you must have made a wonderful film. Thank you. Um, and one Very last good. question about film film festivals. Uh, what are your thoughts in regards? Because I've learned a lot of mistakes that I won't make again in regards to film festivals. Do you have any advice? And we just kind of blindly submit it to everything the first time around, and we learn the festivals that um, what they're requiring, the time length, and so forth. Uh, what are your, uh, all of you gentlemen, your thoughts on film festivals and just kind of understanding? I'm, I'm still okay. green, so it's a huge learning curve the first time. Today? Well, I think that you know the the danger is there's a film festival for every day of the year, and and so you got to be you know I think you really have to force yourself to be selective, and there's a you know, there's always a new list of prioritizing the top ten festivals, and I'm sure that those names change, you know, yearly. Um, but it would be good to focus on two things. One, very, very few, a minuscule number of festivals are actually markets, and that's what you really want to look for. Your your want for going to a film festival, which is to get great reviews and get patted on the back should be second and third to wanting to sell or find a buyer for your film. So the first thing you do in creating your wish list is put the top names of your own list. Um, Toronto is a market. Uh, Montreal used to be and is a sort of quasi uh, market. You know, whatever the film festivals are where there's a history of buying happening, Try to put those at the top of your list, and then the ones that give you the the the, the um you know what we call the the video box, which is obsolete, obviously, but you know the publicity uh, nod, like selection of the Telluride Film Festival. It you know that may mean something, that may not mean something. Maybe you know uh, now Tribeca might mean something. So you really have to stay up on which festivals actually mean something in terms of the marketing and publicity 
that um, somebody who's handling your film for distribution can utilize to put on an ad that's in a, either in a paper or for foreign sales. So you really want to make sure that you're up to date on which festival is emerging, which one has been tried and true and still a, you know, a real staple, uh, and, and try to keep it to 10. Uh, and if you go beyond 10, you know, you're spending a lot of money and you may not be able to go to all of them. Uh, that's another thing. You know, you want to make appearances, but it gets awfully expensive when you're traveling around the country. Yeah. Um, and, and if you're not in competition, they tend not to front you the flight and, and the accommodations. If you are in competition, then you can go to more because they're going to be paying certain for certain big ticket items yeah. like like a hotel room. Right, and, and and also what Tony saying is absolutely so 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 right. It's so true. Uh, but also, you know, look at certain festivals and see if your film is right for that festival. Some some movies, you know, they're just they're, they're just not right for Sundance. They they don't like that type of film. You know, I hate to say that, but it's the truth. You know, uh, there's a certain edgy. They like a certain edgy thing there. You know. Certain other ones like Toronto or Tribeca are a little different, you know. And and, and the lastly, please don't send in your film until it's ready, you know. Oh, this is a it's such a rush to make the deadline. They send it in, it's really not ready, and uh, you know they get rejected and they want to know why. You know, first impression is the last. I'm sorry, that's my belief. So I just true. believe that. That's you know. so true. So send it in when it's ready. If it's not ready, go to the next festival. That's all. Okay. Thanks so much for calling in, Karan. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Jay. Hey, good luck good with luck. your good luck with your film. Thank good you. Yeah, I've seen the film. It, it is just a delightful film. I'm I'm just uh, I feel privileged to know him. Now there's another caller. Last four digits are seven six six five. Well, Let me see. Okay, sir, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, hi. How are you? How you doing? Um, I've been listening to the show. Uh, my name is Michael Giovanni. I'm an actor. Uh, Hi, Michael. And I just, how you doing? And I just wanted to say um, that what Chad said about giving back is definitely true. Um, definitely wouldn't remind and remember who I am, but five years ago when I was staying at Michael Kenneth Williams' house when I first worked on The Wire, where she played Omar, I bumped into Chad in Brooklyn a long time ago. And I uh, was frustrated because I was working on a small little uh, – play, uh, Streetcar Named Desire, and uh, bumped into him at a store, which I was shot, and um, I remember him saying, man, if this is what you want to do, you just got to go ahead and do it without being scared, and it was uh, one of the biggest things that I remembered. I met a lot of people, but never forgot that about Chad, and, you know, uh, just wanted to say thank you, man, and that I definitely uh, got the chance to meet you once, and I'll be a real cool guy. Well, that's very sweet of you, uh, and I'm glad, you know, <laughs> That, uh, you know, things worked out. I mean, I, I always look at it like, you know, what is it? It's three minutes out of my life if someone asks me a question or, or wants a little bit of my time if I meet in the street. And, uh, you know, if, if he takes what I say to heart, it's something that will help him the rest of his life. So I think I could devote five or, uh, you know, three to five minutes of just talking to someone. So I've always felt that way. I I've been that way since, uh, you know, since the very beginning, and I'll continue to be that way. But it's very nice to hear that. Thank you very much. I'm yeah, really worked out for you. Yeah, it was definitely and Michael, real cool, Michael, man. tell them what you're working on now. I think it's pretty exciting. Well, I, I just did. I just co-directed and produced my first show, which is uh, called Hamilton Street, which is uh, doing pretty well. I, I, I chose the uh, Internet uh, stage because I, I think it's a stage that is growing. As far as being able to put our stuff on there, and I've been uh, getting about twelve to thirteen thousand viewers per episode, so it's been very cool. The ride's been great. I'm, I'm actually uh, Screen Actors Guild eligible now. Uh, did some stuff <laughs> on like the last Batman movie. I did some stuff on that, and you know it's been a pretty cool ride, man. But it, there's not too many people I meet or I've met in life that uh, were at the stage where you're at. Like, I mean, you play Sunny, and that's like. A bronze tail is like one of my favorite movies ever. Oh, well, thank so, you very much. That's nice of you. Thank you. you. Know, yeah, it's been cool. And, um, you know, just wanted to call in, man, and show love, man. That's all. And to let people uh, know that exactly I, I, I what you're the, saying. I take that love and I send it back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Michael. All right. Wow, it's really really nice when you can somebody can uh, you know remember how great you've been to them and, and actually um, just say thank you. And it's so nice of you to take 
Take your time, Chaz, and I'm sure, you know, all three of you, you gentlemen do that, and that's a wonderful thing. Now we have another caller, caller from 0974. You are living a dream with Jay Blair Brown. Go ahead. Hello, and thank you all so much for doing this interview. This has been so helpful to us new actors trying to break into the field. I do have a question. I wanted to know if... Being an actor also included being a voice makeover um, actor. Someone told me if you wanted to start off into the business, the best thing to do is to start as a voice makeover instead of plunging right into acting. Does your institute actually include some of that training? Um, <laughs> no, no um, we, we don't include that training, and I don't think that person, um, I, I hate to say this, but, I like to cut to the chase since we I have. I appreciate a, that. Uh, yeah, I I don't believe that that person gave you good advice. I don't I don't know why somebody would say that the way into acting would be voiceover acting. Voiceover acting is one of the hardest uh, businesses to crack. I think learning how to act should be the best and first thing that you do, and then from learning how to act, you should try to get roles in plays. And, you know, and from roles and plays get representation and either management or, you know, talent agent, and then try to get seen for wherever you live. Let's say you lived in L.A. or New York. You try to get onto shows that were shooting locally and take your acting training first and foremost as the most important thing you could do. And I would leave voiceover acting for uh, a separate. Now, that's not to say that you can't go study voiceover uh, acting and go out on auditions for voiceovers, but I don't think the two necessarily help or hurt each other, if you know what I mean. They're separate. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. Well, Chaz, would you agree? Yes, absolutely. That, that was, I'm sorry to say that was not good advice. No, it wasn't. See, that's why. That's why we have the school, because sometimes people just don't know and they give the wrong advice. I mean, the voiceover world is incredibly hard to get into. They use the same six guys. Uh, you know, so, uh, it, it, Jeff uh, Bridges, Jeff Bridges, and Jeff Bridges. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, then it, it, it's like, forget it. You know, if you're going to be an actor, then be an actor. Uh, can, can actors do voiceover? Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, but if you want to be an actor, that's the way to do it. That's the way. Okay. Thanks well, for calling. Very good. Advice. Thanks, Paula. Thank you. Mm -hmm. now, I, I wanted to go back to um, the, the Manhattan Film Institute. Yes. Yeah. Tell me, Tony, you are the yeah. co-founder, correct? Yes. Okay. And and how how did the concept begin? I know you tell us a little bit. You know, you guys wanted to give back. There was you know there was really no one doing what was done for you guys growing up. But but how did you get the wheels in motion? Because, you know, I, I love what you guys are doing, but, but but it seems as if, you know, there should be one in the Midwest and there, and there should be one in, you know, in, in Oklahoma or, you know, Chicago or, or something like that. So if someone's <laughs> listening and says, hey, this is a really good concept, what did you guys do to really push it through and make it happen? Because people talk about things all the time. Well, you know, this was um – I really was blessed when I started and decided, and you hear that young lady call, and somebody gave that young lady very bad advice. And when I was starting out, I was blessed with having really great advice, and people would point me in a direction, and I remember taking everything so much to heart. And I'm so proud of that actress for calling me and saying, hey, what is this? So when I started out, I really believe the places that I went to, like Williamstown Theater Festival, Yale School of Drama, when I was cast in a TV show, it was with Stephen Bochco, and he treated us like a family. And Michael T. Williamson and I will always have fond memories from those days years ago, and we may not see each other for 15 years, but when we do, we hug, because you're, you become family when you're in this business. You do a play together, and you feel like you just got another cousin, and that, to me, was always the beauty of what I did in, in, as a writer, director, actor, producer. It didn't matter. You know, I created a show, and my cast still calls in and checks in with me 20 years later because wow. I felt like the father, you know, and, and they're like my kids. And, and so 
that kind of um, – the beauty of that was always my dream to create a school or an institute that practiced those values, that, that taught that you come together – and you become a family, you fight like a family, <laughs> you make up like a family, and, and you put on a show. And, and, and my friends that I've met over the years, you know, when I met Chaz Palminteri, he was just doing his stage play. And we became good friends to the point where I would say we're very close friends. And, and Tony Goldwyn and all the people that I've met over the years have become like my brothers. And so we, I think they knew that I always, because I started out as a high school English teacher in an inner city school, and that's kind of been a part of me as a teacher. Has it's I was that before I did any of this stuff in the in the film or television business. So mm-hmm. for me, it was just the most natural thing. So how did it happen? It happened because I knew Dominic Antignano, and I said to him, uh, he knew that for years I'd wanted to do something in this beautiful place that I've always summered in, in Greenport, New York. And when I told him this was the dream that I wanted to do with my dear Lisa Galuli and a professor who I had worked with at Chapman University, Jeff McCracken, and we were, and, and, Sh- and Shannon Goldman and Bob Krakauer, we all knew the East End was a beautiful, magical place to start an institute, and Dominic wanted to host exactly that, to bring life and more artistic energy to Peconic Landing. So that it was like, I don't know how you do it all over the country, because there'd have to be a Dominic and Tignano in every place. <laughs> uh, and believe me when I tell you, when people go to our website, Jay, and they see the picture of where we hold our classes, a building that is so stunningly beautiful, it makes you want to write a novel, forget about uh, write a movie. Uh, it, it, it's inspirational. I mean, Chaz stepped out of a car and looked at the place and said, this is instant credibility. Now we've got to teach our asses off, you know. It's beautiful. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and if they do go to the website, you know, we have to update it, obviously, but it, they'll look at Break Knock Hall and they'll say, wow, and they'll see what I'm talking about. They'll also see some of the films that we made. But I hope that answers your question a little bit. It was like, you know what it was, Jay? It was good timing. And what we were offering, everybody was available Ben York Jones was available. Chaz Palminteri was available. Tony Goldwyn. Everybody was available. And when they actually saw that it came off and it changed so many lives, it, it became something we all wanted to do again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the website now. And I have to tell you, I, I, I just love – now, for me, the only downside is you only do it once a year, right? Is, is it just those couple of weeks in the summer? Yes, it's going to be, uh, we're going to try to do it every July and grow from there. And, and, you know, with Chaz's offering in November, that's going to be a wonderful way for people to keep up with Manhattan Film Institute. And then we'll do that again in the spring. And, uh, but, our, but our primary focus is to live as a summer uh, institute. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. I have a question for, for Chaz. Um, comes from the chat room, and this is from Ralph. And, and Ralph's older. He's an older gentleman who's just getting into acting the way that he really would like. And he asks, at what stage in life were you, Chaz, when you decided to make a career out of acting? He says he wants to know because he's, he's later in life, and he's had the wonderful opportunity to do some great independent films, including Green Castle that I just spoke about uh, from uh, Karan Dunbar. So um, can, can you address the age issue with Ralph? Okay. Oh, well, that, you know what? That's a very good question. Well, first of all, I wanted to be an actor since I was 10. I was about 10. And then I went to a community college, not a very big-time college, uh, and I was a drama major. And uh, I just always wanted to be an actor now. But referring to what you, the question you asked, I always tell people, I don't care if you're 40 years old and you, you've, been, you've been a cop for 20 years, and all of a sudden you want to be an actor. Dennis Farino was a cop for 20 years. He retired and got into his passion about acting. In fact, the older you are, the better it is. 
because there's yeah. just more. The more you work, because most of the uh, most actors are, are young, and you have much more competition. By the time people are in their forties and fifties, you weeded out all the people who just can't take it anymore, so they quit. So if, if you're really good, if you're good and you're older, you have a, an excellent chance to work. So don't don't let that scare you. When people say, you know, what are you crazy? I know what people say to you. What do you want to be an actor for? You're 50 years old. You're 40 years old. That's wrong. If you're really good and you walk into that room and you know how to audition and you give a great reading, uh, you're getting the part. What, that's the great thing about acting. They don't care if this is your first time. You don't have to have a resume that you went to Harvard or Yale or, or you've been acting and this is, you know, you know so, much, so much experience. If you know how to act and you're right for the part, you're getting the part. It's just that simple. So uh, I hope that Very helps you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can, I can vouch for that, Jay. Uh, uh, listening to Tony and Chaz, it's, it's been uh, fascinating for me because I lived with it for July, and they really cut across all the age barriers. Um, it went from at least 18 to mid-80s. They opened up uh, an acting class to uh, people who live here at our cultural center at Peconic Landing. It was one of the benefits of, of us hosting the program, and it was a program by a of course, by Larry Moss, who's the acting coach for Leonardo DiCaprio and Hilary Swank and, and many others. And uh, Chaz and Tony allowed our residents, our, some of our folks, to audit the class. And these were people who are actors at, in our place facility here in their mid-'80s who were totally transformed by this. So these guys have inspired. Uh, we've, had, we've had people call in to talk about how they've been inspired through their careers, I can tell you firsthand that I've, we've never experienced anything as successful or uh, truly moving here. They made a difference, and they made a difference that's still rippling through the community. I, I congratulate them, and we really look forward to hosting them again next year. Now, now, so, Dominic, how, how are you associated, or how did you become associated with Peconic Landing? Uh, it seems like I was born for this job. And it's, it's 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 laughable, but maybe true. It's it's um, uh, there's a, a very enlightened administration here. Bob Siren and Pat Lutsky, who who run the facility, uh, wanted to create a cultural center and enhance their cultural arts programs at Peconic Landing to make for the benefits of the residents and the people who live here at Peconic Landing. Serendipitously, it opened up and extended to people in the community, which. And then five years later, after the, the program has begun, uh, it became a very successful cultural arts center that continues to grow. Our programs are um, on the website, peconiclanding.com. Or, for more information, people can call. I hate to put a plug in, but I think I, I shall. Go ahead. 631-477-BLUE. And also through the Manhattan Film Institute, please visit their website, and uh, www.manhattanfilminstitute.com, and it it it'll open up a whole nother door. It's it's they've transcended the age barrier. It, it Chaz was absolutely correct. It doesn't matter at any age. If at 85, I have something to look forward to really, it, it, and I hope these guys are here doing it with us again. I I applaud them. Oh well, that's very nice, you and. Uh, thank you, Dominic. But it's also the you know, the, the way uh, the community opened up their hearts to us and just made us feel comfortable there. And it just, I think it was one of those things, you know, those magical things, the right people at the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's just like Tony said. It was just one of those things that had to happen. We were all available. The place was available. And uh, everything just hit, and it was magic. And, uh, and, and I'm, we're looking forward to doing it again this year. We can't wait. Thank you, Chad, so much. You're welcome. Well, you guys are going to have to come back on to the show and talk about what you're going to be doing next year. And absolutely keep me posted on what you guys are doing. I'd love to, you know, plug you as much as I need to on this show. No, oh, thank you. Uh, no, because I, it's, I think it's very, very needed. Um, I, I did want to talk very briefly. We're, we're down to our last five minutes, but I did want to talk very briefly about uh, the tuition that that you guys uh, have posted on the website 
on uh, ManhattanFilmInstitute.com. I'm looking at that website now. Do you offer scholarships, or how how does that work? Yes, we um, we have. Uh, I think we offered three scholarships uh, in our first summer, and we're going to try to increase on that. Um, we had uh, scholarships for the writing retreat, and we also had. Uh, I think we had two for the writing retreat, and and I believe we had three, so we might have had five total. What we did was we took a full um, scholarship uh, donation, and we actually divided it. So even though we only had three, we took three, and then we made it five. So by breaking it up and offering half uh, tuition help, uh, that became a scholarship. So it was... Um, it was a little tricky, but uh, you know, it was um, a huge undertaking. You know, in terms of if you think about showing up on July 1st and then leaving on July 15th with an, a sound, sync, color, beautifully shot, edited, <laughs> finished film, 20 of them. Um, it was. Uh, I don't know how we did it and kept. You know, did it within budget, but. Anyway, budgeting was the hardest part of the whole thing because we housed and fed everybody and and provided that kind of um, filmmaking intensity. I mean, people were literally sleeping in the edit rooms, and it was um, it was amazing. But I, I wouldn't have traded it for anything in the world. It was just amazing. So so we will we will try to build on the scholarship uh, program as the program builds. Yeah. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, we're down to our last three minutes. I just want to say again, you guys were great. I love this show. I'd like to give you all one last minute to tell us um, where we can keep up with you, what you, what your next project is, that sort of thing. So let's start with you, uh, Tony. Okay. Um, I just um, sold a new uh, series idea to CW, so uh, I'll be writing uh, a new hour drama uh, for the CW, uh, and I'm in a partnership with a music company called Boardwalk Entertainment, and it's going to be a new show drama about a, a young band. We, oui, I like called, it. I called like the, it. Yeah, called the Reeds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dominic, how can we keep in touch with you? Yeah, simply uh, PeconicLanding.com uh, or six three one four seven seven Blue Peconic Landing uh, uh, and its cultural arts programs and its and the programs that are open to the community um, this 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 fall include uh, the ballet with uh, a partnership that we formed with emerging cinemas and we'll have ballet from the Bolshoi uh, captured live and then broadcast into our, our auditorium open to the public along with uh, the Royal Ballet programs coming up including Swan Lake and the Nutcracker in December and uh, wow several other uh, educational programs that will be open to the public. Visit our website, and people can always call us direct. Okay, okay, thank you. And, Chas, last but certainly not least, <laughs> oh, well, what do you have going you. on? You have your one-man show coming up. Yes, yeah, so, well, I'm doing my, I do my one-man show, in, like I said, in Las Vegas. and uh, I'll be in Chicago uh, October 28th and 29th. Uh, then I'll be uh, I'm, I'm going to be in Staten Island this Saturday, one night only, at uh, Harbor Lights Theater. Uh, and also, uh, you know, I'll be I'm back on Modern Family. I'll be coming back on Modern Family. I'm in the premiere now. Uh, the season premiere is this Wednesday. No, uh, is it this Wednesday? Next Wednesday, excuse me. Is it the 26th? When is the 26th? Is that this Wednesday? I think it is. Yes, it's this yes, Wednesday is the Wednesday. premiere from on Modern Family, so I'll be back on there again. And I've written another play for Broadway called Human that I'm very excited about, called Human. And so uh, uh, things are really good. And anybody who wants to get in touch with me, I have my website, askchaz.com. They can ask a question, and uh, that is the best way to uh, get in touch with me, askchaz.com. And also my other website, chazpolitary.net. Either one. And, and, and your radio show starts next Wednesday. And my radio Wednesday. show will be on every uh, starting October 3rd for one hour only. Uh, between 6 and 7, channel 104, where I'll be as answering questions about the business and trying to help people out. And okay. Jay, Jay I, want yeah. to I just would like to plug, Chaz is teaching an amazing two-day uh, oh, course audition uh, intensive with Chaz Palminteri 
uh, on November 10th and 11th, Saturday and Sunday, and they will be able to go to uh, the Manhattan Film Institute website, uh, www.manhattanfilminstitute.com, and this week we'll be uh, able to uh, have people sign up uh, for that audition intensive with Chaz on November 10th and 11th. Okay, well, that's a great way to end the show. I thank you guys so much. Please, please, anytime you'd like to come back, just give me a call. You know, you guys know how to get in touch with me. We would love to have you back. Thanks for oh, having thank us. You. Thank you, Jay. Sure. Have a good evening. Take care. Good night. Good night. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.